Welcome back to the Bourbon Buddies. And today, well, we were just kind of having a little conversation and decided that we're going to record it and let you, you know, fill you guys in on what we've been thinking. Mm -hmm. So what we have here, and this kind of started the whole topic, was a couple of, uh, I don't want to call them store picks, but, they're, but they are sort of store picks. Sort of, kind of, should have, would have stuff. And you can go online and get these at Bourbon Street uh, Liquors. Is it? Is it liquors or wine and spirits? Wine and spirits. Mm -hmm. Bourbon Street Wine and Spirits out of New Jersey. So he actually, the owner actually goes and picks these barrels and has it bottled and sells them. Yep. So then we started talking about store picks and what is like some of the beauties of store picks mm -hmm. and why you might want to try to get them. And for us, we're like, well, hey, this is like a regional thing. I mean, you want to talk about limited release. You, you bottles a barrel. And yeah, that's it. So, like, you know, this happens to be what he's calling uh, batch five, or yeah, but it's really barrel five, barrel seven. We we have a mm -hmm. couple different ones, but the whole point of it is, like, once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. So you better get it and enjoy it because it's it's. I don't think it's one of those things that you're gonna be like an a rare thing. Find it and then be like, oh, I'm gonna hang on to it because it's gonna be worth money because mm -hmm. most of the people out there probably can't get their hands on absolutely and we were i think we were looking at an article where it was talking about <laughs> highly allocated bourbons out there that everyone goes crazy for and and, it, and you know the whole buffalo trace craze that everybody kind of just gets i think obsessed it's totally obsessed it with is. like i've seen people on reddit and people um you know, on Facebook, people on Instagram, they are just obsessed with bus Buffalo Trace. Buff, bu buff Buffalo Trace? Trace. <laughs> They're obsessed with Buffalo Trace, or um, somebody and it's calls good, it. It's good product. Oh yeah, but there's other good products. So, so many other what ones drives the obsession. For I, one, I think it's like you not being able to get it and it makes you want it. It's yeah, like it you makes want you the thing it. you can't have. Exactly. Yeah. It, yeah, it makes you want it, and I think people kind of go crazy over that. Whereas you brought up this point of this owner of this liquor store chain which i think he's got like what three or four stores I think he's got like four yeah at least four um or wine spirits chain in uh, new jersey what's really kind of cool is that he's going to mgp in indiana right are and these, oh do we are these all mgp they are okay um i think it says right on the back here distilled in indiana um yeah he gives the age and everything on the back here but so he actually picks like a high rye he picks a, a rye mm -hmm. he does a weeder or two and then he just keeps kind of like revolving through that yeah and I, I think it's great that if you kind of let that whole highly allocated bourbon thing go um just let it go for a little bit your eyes open up to so many great things because if you go to your local store, let's say you're in a state that, um, you know, th that is privatized, right? You can go to all these different stores and pick up these amazing bottles that are store picks and, you know, of, of big distilleries too. Like you can get, you know, like this Knob Creek store pick. Oh, 120 those store proof. Picks are so good. Yeah, almost almost 15 years old. I know this is probably not going to last that long because uh, I know that they're starting to pull some. They're not allowing that 15 year stock out too much more. But um, you can go yeah. and spend not that crazy amount of money and get something that you said is so unique and is ready to drink right now and just enjoy it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Something like a Knob Creek store pick, I don't know, would a store pick be as sought out as like a, a nationwide distributed item, right? Because a store yeah. pick is going to be, that store picked it. So let's say you were hunting for this allocated bottle mm -hmm. and it was a store pick and you were kind of wanting it for value, like monetary value. Right. Would it be worth as much or would it be worth less? Because it's like, a store pick, it might not be the same as the regular release, right? Mm -hmm. So whoever reviewed it or whatever, and whatever the hype train behind it is, would it be worth as much? That's an interesting and question. So, so you just get store picks to kind of take the pressure off yourself and drink it and just enjoy <sighs> it. Because 
the truth is, and we say this kind of jokingly at times, mm-hmm. but you really can't take it with you. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I'm not saying you can't invest in this stuff and, like, make money with it if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. I'm, I know there's people that do. Oh, And yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's totally fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but for somebody who just wants to enjoy it, to enjoy it, but then they get that bottle that they've always wanted, and then they're like, oh, well, you know, I, I don't want to open it because... Well, it might be worth something. I mean, I've done that. Like, should oh, I open yeah. it or not? And should I open it or not? It's just like, hey, might as well just I'm not going to sell it. it, most likely. Right. I would have to be, you know, it wouldn't be the first thing I would sell. Right. Right? So why why put that stress and anxiety on yourself? 100%. I, you brought up so many great points. I just want to piggyback. Can mm. I piggyback mm. on some of them? Because I, I... Absolutely. Buddy, you did a nice job with Thank that. Thank you. Um, so the, the one point that you brought up is for is do store picks of bourbons force you to straight up drink them? I think yes, because that barrel that was picked for that bottle or for the bottlings, um, very unique. So it's, it could be totally different than the product that you normally see on the shelf. And I think it's such a great thing if you're looking to get into bourbon. Uh, I think a great point to start is just get your basics, right? Get like four rows of small batch. Um, if you can find it, get Buffalo Trace. You can get that flavor profile. You know, go with Jim Beam. Get Mo- Knob Creek or, you know, uh, you know Jim Beam Bonded or whatever. Or just like, you know, if you want a little lower proof, you know, get Willet. Like all the different major distilleries. Dip get, your toes into all the yeah. major distilleries. Yep. Get those flavors down. See which one you kind of gravitate to. And then when you want to step it up a little bit, Go get store picks of these different these you know brands, and um, that's what kind of makes it really cool. And I think that that's a very obtain obtainable hunt. Yeah. Because it, we yeah, just yeah. talked about you're addicted to the hunt of things like you can't get it, so you, you can't really want it. Now you really want it. Yep. That kind of okay. Well, it, you only can get it at this store if it's you know for this. We only can get it at the store, right? So that's kind of in itself highly, you know, um, and it's it's great stuff. Yeah. But it's not like we can like, all right, I'm going to buy a bunch of these because one day they're going to be worth so much money. And Correct. it's just like pe- most people would look at it and go, well, wh- what's that? Yep. Right? Because if you didn't know, and I mean, you might, you could argue that you might find that one person who had it years ago and willing to give you a few extra bucks for it. But it's not like this crazy investment. You know what I mean? Like, yes. people get weird about when they, yep. you know. They think everything's not everybody does it, but there are people that think you know everything they has will be worth something one day, and it yeah, you know, and it, it doesn't always work that way. Not no. to say that those things don't happen, not to say that there's not collectibles, mm-hmm. but is it like I don't know, is something on the shelf really worth never enjoying and collecting? I, no. I don't know. I say no, you unless say it's no. sentimental to you. Like yes. let's say it's like a grandfather that had a bottle Mm. that they never opened Mm -hmm. and they wanted to keep it in the family and didn't want to open it. I could totally see that. And this is, again, these are all my personal opinions. So, well, I I get, I get sentimental about stuff. Like it's, it's hard for me to, to part with that kind of stuff. Like I'm the one who will hang on to things because it was my grandfather's or my Mm -hmm. dad's or whatever. I'm just, I'm a sentimental guy. You are. You're very... a very sentimental guy. Yeah, I don't let go of things easy. You have a hard exterior buddy with a soft core. That's right. You're like the uh, the opposite. Oh, no. You would be like a Tootsie Roll pop. Tootsie Pop. A Tootsie Pop, right? Tootsie Pop. Yes. Jesus. That's, that's going to be my nickname. We're going to have to edit that. Um, <laughs> nope, that's not happening. It's not getting edited. So, like, as I'm looking here, I'm like, all right. As you're grazing. As I'm grazing. It's like, <laughs> is there anything that's like, oh, I shouldn't drink it? because it's going to be worth something or like not open it. I got you one. Okay. This actually happened to me a little bit, but I ended up opening. I was like, I talked myself out of it. It was just freaking Weller. I mean, like Weller Special Reserve. So the green label, Buffalo Trace product. You thought you could sell it? I. It wasn't oh. that I, it wasn't I thought that. It was more of like, I was waiting so long to find Weller on the shelf because in, in PA, you can find it if you, you kind of like, literally stand outside of a, a store and you know it's coming in that day and you stand outside of a store for like an hour before it opens. Only That's kind of where it's gotten right now. Um, 
but like when I found this on the shelf in in New Jersey, I was like, I which we did was, a review on it. Yes. Yeah. Please check you, that. You'll probably out. put that right there. Oh yeah. Pfft. Look, it just popped up. Thanks, buddy. Nice. You have magic fingers. You know? I'll tell you what. And don't. <laughs> I'll tell your wife. That. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that one. Um, so, the, yeah, the Weller was something that I kind of was, like, hesitant to crack open. But ended up cracking it open probably, like, maybe two weeks after I got it. And I was – and I, I shouldn't have waited that long um, because it's just – it's a normal, everyday product. You know, if, if you – yes, it's hard to get, but, you know, it's – the price should be in the 20s, and it should just be a solid, straight up, just kind of – so Buffalo Trace is very hard to find, right? Now somehow it is now. It's um I I've, I've been seeing stuff on on Reddit where people are like Buffalo Tr Trace just dropped here like happy hunting. I'm like, "What? Buffalo Trace? Like it's just Buffalo Trace." But it is. It's 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 heavily sought not after. That, and not that it's bad, but it's not, not anything like I would get excited about like having to track down. Like if it's right. not available, I'm I'm not going to worry about it. Right. I mean and that, that's kind of what but forces you. What we'll do is we'll sell this now. You can email us and uh, $15 an ounce. No, yep, but yeah. it, it's it's crazy how some of that happens. And, and I know we, we touched on this before in a mm -hmm. video about the allocating and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which Neil will probably put if you want to check that out. Um, how the hell does some of this happen? Because, or is it just... There gets a little hype train around something. There gets some, some in, in marketing, and then all of a sudden you're, you're you're seeking out this stuff that you used yeah. to be able to get, and then there's certain ones that are on the shelf that are just killer, and they just sit. just solid, and you can get them all the time. Um, I would say 101 is one of those things. Absolutely. I think there was like a little shortage of turkey products for us there for mm -hmm. in our Jersey store. Yeah, and I think VA it was, was all right, right. I think it was a distribution thing where they didn't they were waiting on because the whole COVID, COVID thing. I think, and I think they were waiting on the on the delivery of it or something like that. But you're, you're right. Like there's stuff that sits on the shelf that people go nuts. Uh, like Buffalo Trace, they like seek out and then just they get blindsided. I shouldn't say blindsided, but they they get blinded, blind, blinded, blinded by the 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 hype of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just crazy. I know. Like I, I think. What usually sits on the shelf, if I'm taking a look, I'd say like the number one thing that sits on on a shelf. Right none now of, none that's see, here because you bought it all. Oh yeah, I bought every one, one of these. Um, this is kind of different now because th this is starting to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is starting to kind of catch on. Like people are starting to kind of like grab that up. Yeah, but I think well, I think I think because it's so good and there's so many people. That, that that's something that flies off the shelf, but you can get yeah. it. Yeah, you can you can you attain can, it. You can attain it. It's not like you have to drive three states away. Mm -hmm. You know, hide it in the car to smuggle it back. You know what I mean? Like lagging. Yeah, I think for like four roses for like this small batch select is absolutely insanely good, and it's just kind of sits on the shelf. It, like people aren't going out. Even like single barrel four roses single barrel like the. 100 proof version that sits on the shelf i mean that collects dust almost like i'm like whoa yeah. this i mean this bourbon is just so good and it mm. you know and people are just kind of like passing up on it which know? brings us to an article we saw the article yes we saw an article that was only a week or two old mm -hmm. so maybe it was a, a week or so that baker's it was an article basically like there's this great bourbon that's just sitting on the shelf and i'm yeah. a huge baker's fan oh yeah so for me that that, that cut deep but it was like <laughs> oh uh, <laughs> but how is that so but see i know when we've done reviews and stuff on bakers we feel like it's that one that it's one of those bourbons that flies under the radar it does and it's so good and mm -hmm. either either one the original one, which I still have a bottle, I haven't opened. See, there it is. I won't open it because I can't get it. Yep. Get it. I, so, yep. But is that really smart? See, I am doing it. You are, but you're kind of. But that's something that I can't get anymore. Correct. But well, what's the point of hanging on to it? Right. If you're not gonna enjoy it. Not gonna enjoy it. Maybe I will one. Just day. snip it slowly. Yeah. Make it last over like a 20 year stretch. But, you know, it was the new. The was a single barrel Baker's, right? 
Yeah, the they new, were saying the newer version that yep. came out, and it was like it really didn't take off, which blows me away because I think that is something that flies under the radar, and that it should does. get more hype. But maybe, maybe if it wins an award one day, all of a sudden you won't be able to find it, and it'll be twice the price. But it could, yeah, it's it's the marketing of all this. Just it just drives me crazy sometimes. It it kind of, and it is it's like the marketing kind of takes it, it takes on its own. It hops on different roads, and it you, you, it's almost like a, a highway where you have exits, right? And certain and the, that that hype train will kind of go off certain exits depending on how you know it might be on the highway for two years, might be on for one year. So it, it's kind of you see all these bourbons as more and more of them come out. You're yeah. seeing them kind of come on that highway a little bit, and then they're like, "Oh, we're done. Let's exit," right? And they pull off. And right. I think um, right now Bakers, I just. You yeah, know, when I, we saw that article, I was like, man, that's... I felt like it was an unsung hero before. It was, with the small batch. It was definitely And now it's hero. like they came out with this whole new release, and I'm wondering if that's not why. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. But it's like, all right, well, let's... Maybe if we rebrand, re a no, new bottle, the whole thing, yeah. like come out with something new, drop it, it's going to take off. And it's different. Mm -hmm. It's a little different, but it's still, like, really, really good. And I haven't seen many people talk about it. I haven't heard much about it other than this article that it's like, here's a bourbon that's great that's still sitting on the shelves and you can get it everywhere. You know. Yeah. Now I don't know if that if you guys everybody, everybody can right. get everywhere, but it's it's pretty easy to get your hands on. Mm -hmm. And here again, you don't hear much about it. No, it just sits it's just kind of And that brings us to the... another point that we were talking just before we turn the camera on, is that like bean products in general? Because mm -hmm. we saw that article and it was like, well, what gives with that? That's strange. Yep. You're right. They just don't get a lot of love. Uh, other than the Knob Creek right now. Yeah, and the Knob Creek, I think, with the single barrel 120 proofers, they're like amazing. The store picks, even, they're amazing. Even their, um, just their regular store, just like you see on the shelf, the, the nine year. Is fantastic. It's just, it's just unbelievable. So I think that um, no, I have, I don't know if I haven't purchased any of the nine year. I was looking at it, it's and good. I went with the single barrel select, which was also a store pick, right? And so you I can't mean, go that's, wrong. With that's that. that's so good. So I almost feel like, and um, this was another one. Oh man, this is becoming my, that's becoming my <laughs> new favorite right now. I think. I, I was kind of uh, think I was I was looking at something where they were comparing the um, Jim Beam single barrel, the new one. So it's 108 proof, non chill filtered. Which and feels all about the all about it. Get that mouthfeel, baby. Um, they were comparing this to the Distillers. Um, I think it's called Distillers Cut. Not no, not is it Distillers Cut? No, because I'm thinking Devil's Cut. But there's like a Distillers. Um, edition of Jim Beam 100 proof um, that you know they it's comparable to um, which they discontinued so this kind of came out they discontinued the Jim Beam single barrel before which had the, like the white label and it was like a weird bottle yeah, kind of shape yeah, yeah. kind of awkward and then they put it in this um, which is their new bottle design but at 18, 108 proof is like the perfect proof point we've been noticing and you know this this thing it's 20 some bucks in the 20s and this will smoke smoke most bourbons for that price i would say yeah. even if it, you know you tap into the 40 50 dollar range this is going to smoke it um, yeah that's that's actually really good that's very good stuff for the price yeah, that's even, probably i would say one of the like top three under 30. i agree i mean and that just kind of just whatever people yeah i mean i think 101 is tough to beat that is but different. that's that's you know depending on your flavor profile and, and what you prefer that might be one one hundred and one for the price point. It might. I mean, you put it in a blind, it might smack up a little bit on it. A little slap battle. Just give it a little <laughs> stop and slap on that. Get you one hundred and one and snap you. So, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. That's that's un you know what? And we'll have to do that in the future. We will. We're gonna have to. I have to do a little uh, 30 and under blind. Ooh, baby. Hello, hello, get hello, some, hello. Get the 101 in there. Get some mm. Jim Beam. Snake. And I got the 101 with the with the, the higher ratio of 10 years. 
Oh, oh yeah, the laser the code. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. laser code. Neil came over and he's like, "Twelve years." Pulls yeah. it off the shelf. He's like, looking at it with his phone and his flashlight. This is the laser code with the more tenure. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, I'd be curious about that. So here again, there's a lot of really good. So we're kind of where we're going with all this. Like mm-hmm. if we were gonna like put an umbrella over all of it, it's like there's so much like good stuff out there so that you could be missing out on. You really could be missing out on. Yeah. And I'm sure you're going to find that one that's a, you know, you're like, roll the dice on, you're like, oh, damn it, I waste oh, my money. I've done yeah, that. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> but I think that's part of the journey, you know? It is. You have to and appreciate you, the good because you've had the bad. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and what you do is you take that bottle and you use it for mixers or you use yeah. it for a company who doesn't know the difference and they're like oh i want to try you know oh i just had bourbon you know what, what's a good bourbon you're into bourbon and be like well what do you think of this and you could give them a hefty pour of that or you could do it after they had a little bit of good stuff and their palate is kind of like burned out a little bit yeah, just just, them. yeah here's a little of that you can, <laughs> you can burn it up so there's the swill yeah there, there's a way out of that so um <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious! Yeah, I mean, but but uh, I, I think you're right with the umbrella. Like you know, it's all kind of under this whole thing of, you know, there 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 are very very good bourbons out there that are there's very few of them. I mean, store picks because if that store, let's say, picked a barrel, I mean, there's only a certain amount of bottles for that barrel, right? So that's that's something that's very interesting because they don't like jack the price up of these things you know it's it's good price um you get different experiences with each it keeps you going back to the store too and in this age of everything's online everything's you know i think it's great when you go to a store and you have that relationship with that store or even just not even a relationship because i know some people are a little hesitant to talk to one another Um, but even if you just go to the store and just kind of like see what they have in stock give them business um, I think it's like kind of a cool thing, keeps you going back, keeps you trying new things. It puts you, and that's why I think ultimately store picks do. It makes you try new things and drink the bottle that you bought, because like you said, yeah. you can't take it with you. I mean, I am gonna be buried with a bottle of bourbon in my in my grave. I don't know what bu- bourbon. I'll probably take a couple. You know, just it's like the Egyptians. You know, they said like, like this giant casket. <laughs> like a double wide because he's just in there with like all kinds of burp. Oh, I want this one with me too. And oh, I might need a little nip of this on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you know, in my grave, I'll have like a little compartment. Your hands so that, will be like this, like holding the bottle of, of what? Right now, what would that bottle be? Oh my God. Dude. See, that that's a whole other thing. I mean, I don't even know. I would have to take like five bottles with me because I need one of each. I need like, I definitely have a Knob Creek store pick with me. That would 100% be, be That's, happening. I, I would agree with that. I would probably have a Stag Jr. Yes, I know it's Buffalo Trace, uh, but the Stag Jr., the Batch 12. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, my God. I would have a Four Roses single barrel barrel strength with me because they're just unbelievably good. Like cookies. I'm surprised you haven't said anything about a certain bourbon yet. Elijah Craig Barrel yep. Proof. Of course that would come along. I don't know what batch I would bring with me, though. I don't care. Maybe you maybe you could put that like if like just in the embalming fluid. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> embalm yourself yeah, with bourbon. bourbon. <laughs> Dude, that's freaking sweet. I'm putting that Whoa. in my request. And it all comes from you. I want I wonder if somebody has done that. Embalm I don't know. somebody with like bourbon. That'd be freaking sweet. Sign That'd be me killer. Up. So what we're gonna have to do, buddy, we're gonna have to make a pack. Whatever one goes first, we gotta embalm the other one. And like we have to say better freaking do it <laughs> imagine having you're that like, conversation oh, you're like yeah you're like you're like <laughs> <laughs> pour it on you and be like well he's not gonna drink it yeah so. he'll never know the difference <laughs> oh my god that that actually that's a good idea good marketing scheme buddy see what that's a new business at. idea for us we're gonna start embalming people in whatever you want to be embalmed in it's great yeah yeah because you think about it even if, even if you're gonna be cremated, just pour some Elijah Craig barrel yeah. proof all over you and just light you right up, and do it like the movies, just like <laughs> throw the Zippo behind you, which is filled with Elijah Craig barrel oh, proof yeah. instead of instead of lighter fluid. Just 
<laughs> throw it on you. The way I want to go out was like in, I think it was the movie uh, First Night. It's about like King Arthur, Sean Connery's in it. And like he dies at the end and they put him on this like kind of like boat thing. They have the raft. They the raft. Float him they out. float him out. And, and then the, the archers. Arrow. Yep. So I would just douse myself in bourbon and just like just become one and with then, the bourbon gods. And then, but the guy, the archer who's shooting, it's all tanked up on bourbon. <laughs> so he's like fired off like 20 arrows, like trying to hit it. That's you, a, while you're just like floating off on the lake. Just. <laughs> it's like, see you later. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm into that. Just wanted to share that with you guys, and we were kind of kicking around and like, and let us know what you think. You know, we we read the, all the comments, we try to get back to everybody, and, and we really take in what people mm -hmm. ask us or or say to us. You know, and like, hey, you know, like we're always open to things. Yeah. So, yeah, if there's a topic you want us to, to talk about, yeah, um, or research or look into or our let's thoughts do it. on it, yeah, let's do it, please. It could be so. Anything. Pump them in the comments. Let us know. And uh, from the Bourbon Buddies. Yeah, we'll see you next time. See you next time. All right. Cheers. Cheers.